Hey, yo, peace, family. This is Lord Jamal for the Not A Mean Godcast. And if you watch the Godcast, you know my number one sponsor is Miracle Food. That's right, Miracle Food, the perfect cleanse and reboot for a healthy immune system. And these times, you know a healthy immune system is very important. It's also anti-inflammatory. Miracle Food has Moringa, uh, black seed oil, beetroot oil. It also contains CBD. Miracle Food is just what it says. Miracle Food. Brought to you by my brother, the Chakra Doctor. So this is a Black-owned company, y'all. We promote Black-owned companies here on the Godcast. Okay, so go to ChakraDoctor.org and get your Miracle Food today. Tell them Lord Jamal sent you. Peace. <laughs> Turn the neighborhood into the Bay of Pigs Kidnap the fathers and enslave the kids Now they poison in the water that they gave the kids He ran from the cops so they sprayed his beard We gon' turn the precinct to the Bay of Pigs Saw the crib like that's the way you live Loaf of bread, bacon soda, sitting in the fridge My melanin garners hatred, it's sacred Hussein Boat, I'm too swift for the races Drugs change the house structure See my uncle smoke rocks downstairs Now the attic is in the basement Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Hey, what's good, y'all? Miss Ravioli. Tyson Williams. Chris Bryan. Diplomatic. Vic FM. What's good, my good people? Shout out, Vic. Hey. Welcome back to What You Think, Lord. I'm Lord Jamal. That's the homie, Artie Stacks. What's good, Stackington? Let me get you on the on the equal cam right now. What's good? What's good, Stackington? Yo, blessed to be alive to see another day, man. Sometimes we take for granted the little things, man. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Um, it's good to see you, bro. Hey, always good to see you, my brother. What's going on, man? Shout out to, uh, to your boy, Big Stu. I know you out there in St. Louis. I don't know if y'all knew that, but um, the home of uh, Artie Sax is out in, in St. Louis, and he's recording out of Big Stu's uh, studios. Um and yeah, you always have it looking nice, man. Your background and shit. You be having different colors and shit. You got the green and the blue going on. I see you, bro. I see you with the golden mic and shit. That's Big Stu. Big Shout Stu. Out Big Stu. All right, well, since we shouting out people real quick, you know my number one fucking sponsor on the Godcast is Miracle Food. That's right, Miracle Food. The, the cleanser, the immune, the immune booster. Uh, shout out to my brother, the Chakra Doctor. Uh, that's a black-owned company. Um, health is wealth, people. And, you know, all this type of shit they're talking about to try to, uh, you know, help you with your health. There's other things that can help you with your health besides bang, bang, boogie and all this other shit. You know what I mean? And face diapers. Um, there's natural things created uh, by nature. Uh, by the creator uh, and a lot of those things are inside miracle food so go to uh, the website chakradoctor.org and get you a bottle of miracle food okay that out the way um, mm. this past weekend 
uh, yours truly uh, went down to Baltimore and uh, they were having their second screening of Buck Breaking by Tariq Nasheed. Buck Breaking by Tariq Nasheed. Now, I am in this film, people. Uh, along with a lot of other doc, uh, scholars, Dr. Ma'at, uh, Wesley Muhammad, Dr. Jeffries, um, you know, uh, Professor Kaba, a whole bunch of people are in this movie. Um, it was my first time seeing, seeing the shit. And let me say it was great. It was very well put together. You know, I'm not sure how many movies, uh, how many documentaries uh, Tariq has put together so far. But, you know, as you keep doing something, you're going to get better and better as you do it. And so it's got to be at least his fifth, sixth, you know, if not more documentary. And you can just tell that he's got his shit together. You know what I mean? As far as putting all this information together in a cohesive way that moves along in a way that keeps the viewer um, engaged. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this, it a lot. Was uh, this your first one? Was this your first one? You've been in another one of his. No, no, this is the first, this is the first one. I okay. always wanted to be in like hidden colors and shit like that. You know, the first time I seen him, I was like, damn, why, why didn't it hit me up for this? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt like I would have been a good fit. Right. Um, but people didn't really know the type of shit I was on at that time, other than brand Nubian. They didn't necessarily know what type of speaker I was. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I knew. Right. So I was like, damn, you know, I wish they'd hit me up. But finally, you know, you make knowledge born and, and you see certain things in your mind and. You know, I saw myself being in a Tariq Nasheed movie. I didn't know which one it would be, but, you know, here it is. Now I'm in a Tariq Nasheed movie. So shout out to Tariq Nasheed. Uh, Y'all right. go get the DVD or I believe you can, um, I believe you can uh, check it out online. Oh, I see Big Stu in the chat. Um how was how was uh Baltimore? That's my old stomping ground, DC, Washington, DC, Baltimore area. How was it? Oh man, it was dope, man. Uh shout out to a brother named Jabari who uh brought me out there. He got a okay. barbershop out there, I believe it's called Conscious Cuts. Shout out. Um it took me to this place called uh to eat called the Terra Cafe. Black oh. owned, black owned restaurant. You know, they had some day party going in there on in while we was walking through to get the food. Mm -hmm. Yo, they had a fish sandwich in there. Mm. Where's this by? Is this by the uh, harbor? The inner harbor? I don't think so. I, okay. I, I can't, you know, don't get me the line. I don't know where exactly we was at mm -hmm. in Baltimore. Hang on. First of all, shout out to Tony Mario Golden the second. He said, love seeing this channel grow. Forget the Russian, you goddamn Russian. Mm. Thank you, my brother. We appreciate you. <laughs> this Vic FM, peace to you, brother. He said, this is the least I could do right now. Sorry, Uncle Lord and Cousin A. I'm on IG. Follow Vic, okay? Thank you, my brother. We appreciate you. Salute. Salute. Y'all go follow Vic right now. My brother Vic FM. That's his IG right there. Word. Give him a follow. Word. Let him know that you watch your Godcast and that you appreciate him. Word. Um, so all I can say is this fish sandwich was, you know, it was mother slapping worthy. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like it was very fucking good. Um, mm. Yeah, whatever they put on it, whatever dressing, I didn't really need to put no hot sauce or no extra shit on it. Like, but it wasn't too weighed down with a big with a bunch of gloopy sauce. You know what I mean? It was just right. enough to make it flavorful and had the veggies on there. And 
and then they had this cabbage on the side that was seasoned to perfection and it was oh man the shit was very very good so it got um, lord jamar's approval huh absolutely okay got lord j cosign okay and i would definitely recommend you go check out the terror cafe mm-hmm. uh the next time you are in the baltimore area word uh that being said let's move on a little bit uh because the one that really plugged me in to coming down there is one of our viewers uh shout out to dr maat who was also in um she was also in buck breaking and she has a series called mel trek okay this is dvds for children where they're teaching african history okay so you'll want to check out go check out dr maat and and um she'll let you know how you can get a hold of these but these are called Mel Trek and um, what I think episode one, episode two, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And uh, yeah, something for the seeds, man. We need to, to control our narrative. We need to uh, be teaching our seeds, you know, from when they're seeds, you know, we give up our children a little too early to these strangers that mm-hmm. we don't know. You know, and believe that they're going to educate our children properly, you know, and they don't. So uh, let's start taking that shit back into our hands. And finally, uh, I met a brother there by the name of Olatunje Mwamba. I believe that's how you say his name. Olatunje Mwamba. Mm. And he wrote a book called An African-Centered Response to the LGBTQIA organizations and their agenda. Mm. The conversation no one wants to have. Okay. Um, <laughs> shout out to Digger. <laughs> Digger just shot us. What'd she say? What Digger doing, doing, man? I'm never sitting still when you shoot. I'll just donate. <laughs> Ah, we're digging in them streets. Yo, we love you, Digger. We know you're moving around out here. We appreciate you. Thank you. Love um, you, Digger. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't figure you'd be sitting still on a uh, Tuesday night, so I didn't even try to hit you for this. I was going to hit you for maybe tomorrow or Thursday. So if you could, put your, put your brakes on, you know, and uh, pump your brakes a little bit, get somewhere stable, and... uh Get the let's, loud throat ready. Let's shoot this puppy. Yeah, get your loud, get your loud throat ready, and let's shoot this puppy. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So shout out to this brother and his book, mm-hmm. and you know, just trying to show light to our people. You know word, word. what we doing. Um, yeah. Some shit went down when I was there, but I don't want to get into it. Where, All I want to say, huh? Yeah. And be more? Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I could have, I could have, I could have, ver- <laughs> I could have got on my verbal bombing shit, but I just chilled. I just chilled. Oh, you yeah, got, no, nah, you, no, nah, it's too that. suspenseful. No, 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 no. It's too Ooh. suspenseful. Ooh. We'll leave it at that. But trust me, niggas don't want it with me. They don't want it with me. Hey. Okay. We don't talk about that off camera. You don't want it I, with me. I got into an incident as well, but we talk about it off camera. You don't want it with me. Mm. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. Let's, let's get not, it popping. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, did you have a chance, Lord Jamar, to check out the uh Floyd Mayweather fight versus Logan Paul? Yes, I did. Would you uh Give us your thoughts on that, man. I I I I just saw highlights of it here and there. What'd you think about it? Did you like it? To me, it was you know, it was highway robbery, just the way that Floyd said it was. Mm. He he said whenever I could make a heist, why not take make a heist like this? Mm. Um, You know, it's something about certain people, man. It's just like they'll draw you in, your attention. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? And these were two 
two individuals where they both have that energy. You kind of right. want to see what each one is going to do. And so when they brought it together, you know, it was almost like, damn, kind of do have to see this. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, fuck it. I would pay 50 to just see what the fuck, you know what I mean, is going on with this. But at the end of the day, you know, if we expected to see a real, like the old school Mayweather, you know, doing what Mayweather does, you know, then yeah, we was going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you know, I think as long as they ain't let the, the fucking, the white boy fucking knock him out of some crazy shit, then, then it's a win <laughs> to, to me. You know what I mean? Because that's the only really way he could have lost is if the, if, if the white boy came in there and, and fucked him up. He tried. I saw he a little tried. flurry. He had one little flurry that he tried. <laughs> and then I've all of a that. sudden, fucking boom. It, you know, some yeah. people are debating whether fucking Mayweather had this nigga knocked out for a couple seconds. Because it looked mm -hmm. like, boom, he hit him with some shit. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it seemed like Mayweather might have been holding him up or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the guy is denying um, that that was the case and all that type of shit. Um... Oh, yeah, we don't talk about that, Digger. He's denying that that's the case. Mm -hmm. um, and and whatever. But but uh, Digger brings up a good point right here. Digger says, I love how she's just interactive through the chat. Uh, Digger mm. says, I don't like the fact that some random YouTuber can get in the ring and last with one of our greats shaking my head. Mm. Now that is that is true. Like certain certain things should be reverent. Certain shit things shouldn't be just so easy just because you got money you can fucking all of a sudden, you know, I can fly Air Force 1 or some shit. Like they would never do that. Like you understand what I'm saying? There's certain right. shit that I don't give a fuck how famous you are or whatever the fuck that you shouldn't have access to. And the fact that they'll use one of our greats um, to let this guy basically live out his white boy fantasies, which is what this is, because uh, he said it at the end. Like, shit, I can't even believe that, you know, <laughs> y'all even went for this shit. Like, that's the kind of shit he was saying. That they're like, wow. I can't even believe I'm in the ring with, with, with Floyd. Like, are you kidding me? He's one of the greatest fighters. This is still surreal to me. Mm -hmm. Because even him, he probably can't believe his white privilege of, you know what I mean? How many spoiled niggas would be able to just get in the ring? Or let's say, uh, who's a who's a white champion? Who's somebody white that peep that white people revere in sports? Butterbean? <laughs> no, not Butterbean. <laughs> Wayne, uh, let's say Wayne Gretzky, okay, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wayne Gretzky in hockey or some shit. You know what I mean? Or Larry Bird. Larry you Bird. know, now I'm just, you know, I'm so, I'm a black dude and I'm so popular on YouTube that, you know, they're going to let me play one-on-one -on -one against Wayne Gretzky. Like, yeah, they wouldn't even entertain no shit like that. Wayne wouldn't even fucking entertain it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um... Yeah, so Digger, you can have a good point. And I understand. It's a um I agree, actually. I agree. It is some bullshit that he can just jump up in there. Um and uh let's not forget the fact that this uh was an exhibition fight, so it doesn't count against right. Well, first of all, it would be that there would be no uh announcer of a winner mm -hmm. or loser, which is some bullshit in a way, too. Like, look how, it, you know, look how it protects. To me, it protects the white dude. Because there is there's no way that Floyd was going to lose this shit. Like, he's a real boxer. He's had real fights with real warriors. Like, I'm sorry. Like, this guy has not been boxing long enough to really be in there with a fighter like Floyd. And really, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, that's what I'm saying. And he was mad big. What, he's 30, 40 pounds heavier than him and still couldn't yeah. do the job? Like He looked on. like a heavyweight. He looked like a heavyweight. He, he is a heavyweight. 
Man. He is a heavyweight. Mm. Floyd ain't no goddamn heavyweight. Right. Um. So anyway, yeah, it is. It is some bullshit. I saw it. It was, you know, it was a robbery. It wasn't a, a, an exciting fight. It wasn't, you know, I wish Floyd would have really tagged him up. He, I wish Floyd wouldn't even let him, you know, homeboy try to get that flurry off where he just had to protect and You know what I mean? Yeah, that looked crazy. Yeah, but, it, you know, it was some bullshit. Anybody that know about boxing know that that was, that was some bullshit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, there wasn't nothing. That Floyd couldn't handle, you know what I mean? Now maybe somebody else that's not as experienced as as the as the. Do you what, think was that Jacob? Which one is that, Jacob? What, what, what uh, is Logan? That? Logan? 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 Paul? Yeah, I get them mixed up. Yeah, Logan yeah. Paul. Do you think it would have made uh, Mayweather look a certain kind of way if he would have lost or got knocked out, considering that it wouldn't go as a blemish against his record? Even oh, it was it would have went against a blemish against his hood record. Okay, you know what I mean. Like, like, like. First of all, I don't know, but I hope you're good about to segue into the Lamar Odom and um the white boy, the other white boy. What's his name? Oh, uh, I I can't think of it. I know what you're Come talking on, about. Come on, the singer dude, B. The singer say uh say his name in the chat, people. What's his name? Lamar, who Lamar just fought. What's his name? Anyway, Aaron Carter. So Aaron anyway, Carter. um, like Floyd. Well, especially L Lamar, though. Like, like mm -hmm. you can't let no Aaron Carter whoop your ass. I'm sorry. Like, like Aaron Carter is an ex fucking. You know what I mean? Crack smoking, meth smoking type. Hey, shut up type motherfucker like you know what i mean like like we would have to seriously go to the board and consider like revoking lamar's fucking black card or some shit like seriously like weren't you there if he let, if he let lamar i mean not lamar if he let fucking aaron carter fucking whoop his ass oh no 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 we would have had to at the very least we would have had some sort of adjournment like hang on we got to talk about this y'all like 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 can Lamar still <laughs> can Lamar still call himself black? What, what, weren't what, you there with him? I saw. Huh? Yeah, I, I see. Him, you were there, you were with him, weren't you? Yeah, I seen him out in, in uh, Atlanta and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. When he was yeah. training for the shit, and he was training to some fucking uh, brand newbie and punk jump up to get beat down. And I'm like, yeah, brother, you better do your goddamn thing. And again, like it seems like some of these white dudes they try to come, you know, with as much as they can come, and they begin. Like, Put your head down and just start swinging. Um, shout out to Big Stu Films. Appreciate you, Big Stu. Big Stu, um, salute. Um, yeah, he said, uh, St. Louis checking in. Invite all to watch this great content. That's right. Um, so yeah, he was training and shit, but I'm like, yo, bro, I seen a video where the nigga Aaron Carter was like beating the shit out of one of those dummies and shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. One of those punching dummies. I was like, man, this boy better not let this fucking ex fucking meth smoking zombie <laughs> fucking whoop his ass. You better, oh, you better not. You better not. So, um, yeah, I was very happy to. Um, you to was in this corner, Lord J. Of course. Of yeah. course. Of course. Uh, so that being said, if 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 Floyd would have let Homeboy whip his ass too, even though it wouldn't have went against fifty and zero, it wouldn't have been fifty and one. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter if it would have blemished his. Uh, it wouldn't have his physical it record. Have. It would have blemished our psychological record of Floyd. In a way, oh, did he did he blemish what he, what what he did? Was that a blemish? Ah, uh, nah, not really, because he you know, niggas know, man. That's just a, a, a older fighter now who retired, who just who just made crazy bag a crazy bag off some bullshit. You know what I mean? Like right. off some easy work. Um, but again, if he would have lost, we would have been looking at him sideways. Mm. You know what I mean? As the mm -hmm. black community and just, you know what I mean? Just as people in general would have looked at him sideways. 
So I'm I, glad that that I, didn't happen. And Lamar, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Stuck to your jab. Said, you knew you was long. You know what I mean? Stick to your jab. Let that jab do the talking. Um, I said, um, and he uh, had a Lord TKO, Tomorrow. actually. Uh, Lamar mm. had a TKO on his bitch ass. Mm. 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 Yeah, so that was nice. That was nice. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Uh, Good job. Good job. It would have been nice to see Floyd do the same thing. I, I, Lord Jamar, I had, I had asked why, why does he keep taking on these um, exhibition fights? It's almost like it's free money. Um, it's almost like are you are you not happy with being fifty and O and you want to take an L? Like why you you've got enough money. No, it's free. Well, I mean, I guess some people would say, do you ever have enough money? Mm. Somebody said black versus white in all these boxing matches. Talk about it, Lord Jamar. Hmm. Mm. That is true. They are setting up a lot of these as race wars. Um, best believe white boys was gassed when homeboy knocked out Nate Robinson. They was gassed after that. Ooh, ooh yeah. Like. You know what I mean? They was feeling good about themselves after that. Mm. You know, after this fight, not so much. But that is at the same time, you know, Floyd didn't handle them to the point where niggas would have got it hyped off the shit. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like if he would have knocked them out, you would have had some fucking some niggas would have been out there like, yeah, white boy. You know what I mean? We out here knocking white boys out. You know what I mean? Like, like he didn't he didn't give niggas to have a chance to to have a feeling like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. white boys had that feeling when when Nate Robinson got knocked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, black niggas. You know what I mean, I'm a white boy. I can knock out, I'll knock you out. Don't you think we kind of all want to see the, uh, white versus black? It adds more excitement than black on black. You know what I mean? Entertainment wise. Um. I mean, I think there's a part of us that wants to see that. Ultimately, we want to see good fights, though. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just see black on white. I want to see two good fighters that um, are competing at a high level against each other. Right. Um, and at the end of the day, let's not forget that's what boxing is supposed to be about. You know, mm -hmm. who's the best conditioned? Who's the who's the best technician? Who has the most heart? Who, um, you know? who can keep their their head their calmness the most in order to become victorious that's what boxing is supposed to be about um mm. not just about money not just about you know wins and losses and shit like that you know right. it's supposed right. to be man on man mano on mano cuz it's one of the only you know the few sports where it's like just one person it's not a team sport it's a one on one sport Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And ain't nobody in there to help you. Right. Right. Lord Jamar, um, have you ever heard of uh Don Staley? Who? Don Staley. Don Staley? Staley. Staley. Nope. Okay, Who just that? going into my on this on the sports topic here on the United okay. Mean Network. Ask Lord Jamar. What you think, Lord? Hall of mm -hmm. Famer. Hall of Famer Hooper and coach Don Staley is a hundred percent confident she would thrive at the helm of an NBA team, saying, I surely can stand in front of men and lead them. Now, she is one of the greatest WNBA players of all time, and she is reportedly one of two female candidates interviewing with the Portland Trailblazers to replace Terry Stotts. And if she's hired, she would become the first woman to be named head coach in the NBA. Okay. And your question to me is, do I think a woman can coach an NBA team? Yes. Yeah, she said, uh, quote, I come with a lot of credentials. Staley told the New York Times, as well as, I surely have the confidence I surely can stand in front of men and lead them. I don't see why not. Okay. I don't see why not. No, I don't think that's, you know, 
I don't think any old woman can do that. She must be the special, you're one of the special ones that are able to uh, go into that job. If she's able to stand in front of these men and earn their respect mm -hmm. um, to the point where they'll play for her in a way that they'd play for any other coach, then why not? Right. But you know, cause there's, but there's male coaches that can't achieve that sometimes. Mm -hmm. So if she's able to achieve that, then more power to her. Um, I'm sure she probably, if she, you know, she probably grew up within basketball. She, so she probably understands the game um, right. to a high level and the fundamentals and, you know, all of yeah. that type of shit. Um, right. She's a six-time All-Star in the WNBA and most recently named Coach of the Year in 2020 because she right. coaches college college ball. My question, though, is would the players respect her the same? And that's just something that's real. That's got to be answered and, and, and addressed. And yeah. what makes her so sure that she can lead men? Like she's been leading women all this time. Has she been, has she ever led men? Because, you know, there's, Only college, nuances, college there's women. nuances to all kinds of shit. You know what I mean? Like there's certain leaderships that are gen uh, leadership qualities that are general, but then there's certain things that <clears throat> are tailored to men and women. The way you might lead women might necessarily be the way you lead men. Um, and is this more of, now that I think about it, is this more of the gender swapping, um, you know, role reversal? We want to see women in traditional men's roles and we want to see men in traditional women's roles. Um, well, let me read the quote again, Lord Jamar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quote, I surely can stand in front of men and lead them. End quote. Okay. Yeah, that she feels like she can stand in front of men and lead them. And maybe she can. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just saying that's that's the question. That's the the variable, you know, because I could see a, a player, you know, getting upset and be like, fuck that bitch. Just like they say to a male coach, fuck that nigga. Or, you know what I mean? Fuck that cracker. They be saying all kind of shit you don't hear, you know what I mean, when you're not privy to what's really going on on the court. You unless, sometimes I mean? the, unless sometimes the boom players microphone catches it. I'm saying, yeah, players have temper, te temper tantrums at, at practice, all kind of shit. Mm. She's yelling at who this bitch thinks she, you know what I mean? Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't Jeez. know. A dude might snap, like, you know what I mean? I just don't know. And it all depends on her style. You know, she might have had a style where she was like yelling at the girls and they went for it because this is a strong female. You know, but now if she's yelling at the males. Are they going to go for that like that? I don't know. Mm, mm. I don't she, know. She further on went in a, and elaborated in her interview uh, with the New York Times was that since this would be the first ever in history that a woman could potentially lead a, a NBA team as head coach, that there would be people looking for any small little mistake that she might make and be like, now, see, see to be her downfall. So you may be onto something. Um, I mean, yeah, of course they do that. You know what I mean? Um, again, what's the purpose? Like why? If you've been a successful coach in the female leagues, why do you want to coach in the male leagues? Just so you can say you've done it. Like, like, is that something that you really grew up wanting to do? Like, I always want to, when I, you know, when I grow up, I want to uh, be the first uh, women to coach an NBA team. I want to stand in front of men and lead them. Like, why? Why is this so important? Mm. I'm just curious. 
Like, does this really prove that, you know, women are somehow the same as men? When we know men and women are not the same, and I'm not saying one is greater than the other, but I'm saying equal is not identical. Mm. I remember that post well, you put although up. Although yeah. we can be equal, doesn't mean that we're identical and have to be the same and, and be able to do the same jobs and all this type of shit. Like, like it's, it's just the psychology of it, of trying to break down certain norms, you know, has been going for a while now. And this shit is crazy. Mm. Like, enough already with this shit. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, okay, let her, let her, let her coach. You know what I mean? Let her coach. And we'll yeah, see what it. happens. That's all I can say. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. She's if she competing. does good, you know what I mean? Right. Now she's just going to exist? Is she going to fucking take motherfuckers and get to the championship and all that type of shit? Let's see. Mm. Because that's another whole level of it. Is she now just going to exist as a coach in the NBA, doing just enough to get by? Mm. Or is she going to show that, yo, not only can I fucking stand in front of men and lead them, I can lead them to a championship, mm. which is what every fucking, um, which is what every uh, franchise wants. Mm-hmm. And which is, I'm sure they're going to have to consider upon hiring her. Yeah, so. it's her, her and another woman that are going for the position. Lord Jamar, um, now segueing into this next topic, I kind of thought about you, man. I'm not going to lie. Do you remember when you, I, and Raw Digger would go film the Godcast over at the Black Lady Theater. Shout out to the Black Lady Theater in Brooklyn. Uh-huh, uh-huh, of course. And and we had a ritual. Every time you and Digger would stop where? To get coffee and the snacks and all that. One of your favorite spots, right? Okay. Dunk, Dunkin' Donuts. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now, this story reminded me of you, my brother. Rapper Day Day was arrested at his home in Atlanta. Did you hear about that? No. Okay, so he turned himself in. He voluntarily went to his door at his home in Atlanta, got arrested. I don't even really know who Day Day is, but okay, keep keep, continue. Yeah, yeah. Hey, young world. I was going to ask you about Slick Rick. Hey, young world with these new rappers, okay? So rapper Day Day was arrested at his home in Atlanta for a Dunkin' Donuts stabbing. Say word. What happened? Apparently, he went to Dunkin' Donuts and (laughs) ordered an ice latte. They gave him a hot one. What happened? Something like that. And he gave them a hot one? (laughs) Yes. He drives all the way back home. You know how when we used to go to Dunkin' Donuts to the drive-thru and sometimes we don't check the bag. He drives all the way home and was like, ah. They didn't give These me the chocolate. Just gave me a sausage biscuit. Yes. I told him I wanted the turkey sausage. Oh, it almost made me eat swine. Yes. Ooh. Let me so, go back to somebody. <laughs> so he, yes, exactly. So he drives back to the Dunkin' Donuts location, and um, the video footage is online. You know how they got the cameras inside the restaurant. Mm-hmm. He's arguing, he's arguing with the Dunkin' Donuts girl, and they get into a uh, shouting match. Next thing you know, the Dunkin' Donut girl runs around the counter to where he is. Why? He turns around. <laughs> Why the fuck is doing that for? Yeah, that's what people are saying. So then he turns around and stands his ground. Mind you, him and his boys dressed in all black with a black hoodie on, and he turns around to stand his ground. And the Dunkin' Donuts girl comes out like she's trying to assault him. And he's and, like, whoa, uh, whoa, 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 <laughs> What happened? Yes. The footage shows the girl coming, swinging, swinging at rapper Day Day. 
What does rapper Day Day do? Allegedly, on the camera, he pulls out his poker. And ah, ah, stabbing ah. a girl. Yes. What you think, Lord Jamar? <sighs> okay. My question is, why didn't you check the bag before you left? <laughs> no, 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 no. Seriously. Um, why, why are we stabbing girls that are coming at us? Why are we not just grabbing her fucking the old school, grabbing a girl by her fucking wrists and just like, you know, controlling her and shit? Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, yo, relax. Like, like, you crazy? Like, why would you feel like you had to pull out your poker and start stabbing a female. Mm. And when I mean poker, I mean a knife, not your dick. <laughs> um, yeah. Why would you why would you do that? I don't understand. Um Yeah, I don't I don't I don't understand why dudes do that. So the Atlanta PD were investigating for six months. This happened around December 2020. And um, when he ran out of there, one of his shoes came off. And he left behind one of his shoes and the Dunkin' Donuts when he was running out. He did a Cinderella? <laughs> he did a Cinderella? Are you telling me they found him on some Cinderella shit? Well, we just have to find who fits this slipper. <laughs> yeah, who, man. Who fits this Yeezy? Whoever fits this Yeezy, we shall know who committed the crime. Wait, hang on. It says Day Day inside. <laughs> Wait, hang on. It says Day Day inside the, the, the Yeezy. Um, anybody know a Day Day? Anybody know a Day Day? Yeah, man. Five they came seven. to his house. <laughs> they came to his house about five deep. Knocked Are on you the door. Serious? They came to his house. house five deep and he opened the door with his knife in his hand. Like, hello? <laughs> is that what happened? Yes. And he voluntarily, he says in the video, he goes, why are you guys making all this noise? I told you I'm cooperating with you guys. You guys are going to be making all this noise, banging on my door. Oh, man. Oh, man. You can't make this shit up, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make this shit up. And not only did they trace him from the shoe, you know, the camera, they maybe zoomed. They, maybe his feet was stinking and they, and they just tracked the scent. They smelled Ooh. his feet all the way to the crib. Huh? Right. That could have happened. They get the dog. Woo, those are some funky feet. I, I don't think it's going to be hard. Follow the funk. So, so rapper Day Day, you see the color of your shirt and your hat? He had he has dreads dyed the same color as your shirt. Okay. So they they did a still shot video from the Dunkin' Donuts. They did a still shot video from the Dunkin' Donuts and did a freeze frame of his face like this. Now, mind you, he had on a black hoodie, him and his boy. And guess what was sticking out of the side of the black hoodie? A green dread. The green dreads. Right. And so based upon that still shot photo from the uh, surveillance video, <sighs> plus Day Day's missing shoe, they concluded the six-month investigation and knocked on his door three to five deep. Mm. And wait, what happened to the sister? She ain't dying nothing, did she? I don't think she, I don't think she did. I'm not sure what kind of injuries she sustained from the stabbing. The alleged stabbing. Mm -mm -mm. Well, and now Day Day is facing what? Um, I'm not sure the exact charges. If it's a misdemeanor or it could be a felony assault charge with a deadly weapon. Mm. <laughs> yes. Somebody said he he answered the door wearing one shoe. <laughs> Oh, that's my shoe. Thank you. <sighs> uh, Mr. Day Day, is this Yeezy? Is this yours? Is this your Yeezy? Is this your Yeezy? Oh, oh my yes goodness. It is. I was looking all where did you find that? At the scene of a crime. <laughs> At the scene of a stabbing. 
Ooh, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine running out of the Dunkin' Donuts realizing, oh, I left my shoe. <laughs> Nigga, you're gonna realize the minute this shit come off and you limp, you limp running out of that motherfucker. You, you gonna know immediately. Ooh. Your whole gate is different. You gonna know the fuck. Oh my goodness. When you step on the fucking pebble, when you step on the glass out in the parking lot from the 40 that was broken. Mm-mm-mm. You're gonna know you ain't got no shoe on. You're mm-hmm. gonna know. Let me reference Slick Rick again, the great Slick Rick. Hey, young world. Moving on to another young rapper. Did you hear what happened to rapper Sway Lee when he was celebrating his birthday in Miami? Nah, what happened to Sway Lee? I met that I met the young man one time. He was a, he was a good good young good young kid. Well, oh, okay. Word, word. So rapper Sway Lee gets robbed of 300k worth of jewelry from mm-hmm. his hotel room in Miami. While he was celebrating for his birthday, he was out there for a week and end up taking an L, 300K worth mm-hmm. of jewelry. How? I mean, was well, it a, uh, a sneaky job? Like, like uh, they snuck in his room while he wasn't there? Was it a kick in the door, waving the 4-4? Like, what kind of robbery was this? Do we know? Yeah, well, uh, well. If I were him, I would have kept my jewelry on him. But apparently, you know, you know how when we travel, we go to these different hotels and I guess they have a safe in the hotel room. I'm not sure if he put it in the safe or he just left it out laying around on the um, on the dresser or on his bed. But apparently it was from uh, room service. While he was out and about celebrating his birthday, room service came in. And uh, when he got back to his hotel room. He noticed 300k worth of jewelry was missing, so he went down to the lobby and to accuse the people at the lobby. Hey, your workers stole my jewelry, and, and the they guy were wearing behind, the jewelry. <laughs> the guy, well, actually, the guy behind the jewelry says, "Well, okay, okay, here, here's your bracelet," and they give him his bracelet back. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they give him back his iced out bracelet, but the rest of the jewelry was missing. So they're like, we stole most of your shit, but we're going to give you back a little bit. Yes. Yes. Okay. I mean, why do niggas even have $300,000 worth of jewelry in the first place? Like, like, why are we running around with shit like that? Like, um, there's so many other things that $300,000 can go towards that would be productive, that would, like make more money and or or you know produce goods and services for people that really um would help just your community society whatever you want to call it like why are we spending the money on shit like that anyway Mm. why is he running around with that in the first place putting his life in danger and shit like that and making niggas want to plot on him and all this type of shit. Why we, why we even do that? Mm. This is not the first time this has happened to him. He's lost um, a case full of jewelry at the airport and uh, went on his IG and he left um, his hard drive was in his jewelry case. He actually was his whole book bag got snatched up and it had his jewelry case and his hard drive of uh, so many unreleased <laughs> music, and he was begging to get it back on IG. So this is not the first time he's had a slip up like this. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, charge it to the game. You know what I mean, um, I think you know niggas like that. They get money, and they that's just a story for them. Yeah, I got robbed of three hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry one time when I was in such and such. Mm. Yeah, the next day I went out and bought four hundred thousand dollars worth. Mm. Mm. You know, just to replace it. Fuck it, I wanted some new shit. Mm. That that kind of reminds me of the story. I think it happened maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, Baby Blue, remember Baby Blue from B two B two K? Right with the um with the PPP. Yeah. Pre-pre-pre-loans. 
Well, I think uh, put people in prison loans. The other, well, it was it was about he was he was hanging out in the park with expensive jewelry on, and he's fighting for his life. They robbed him of his jewelry at gunpoint. You think they shot him? Oh, I thought this was somebody. Nah, then I'm thinking. Of You're something. thinking of the uh, Love and Hip Hop. You're thinking nah, of the guy from Love and Hip Hop. Nah, some nigga named. Right, people. Some nigga name. Baby Blue. Baby Blue is is he was the uh Pretty one Ricky of the is in Pretty Ricky or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Pretty Ricky. Yeah, Baby Blue. Didn't he didn't he get locked up for some PPP? Man, you better do your Googles before you come on here. No, I'm telling you. Didn't he ain't get locked up for no PPP? Look it up. That was that was the gentleman from Love and Hip Hop. Nah, that was this nigga, bro. I'm telling you. Heavy set dude, he got a beard. Yeah, light skinned dude. Telling you, man, I know what I'm talking about, bro. Let me see. My mind is like a sponge, bro. Not well, I was I was speaking on Baby Blue because he got robbed too of his jewelry. He might have got robbed of his jewelry, and he's got he's there. Yeah, comes up Baby Blue PPP loan. You oh see? yeah, he he pled uh he pled I'm guilty. Talking, what the fuck yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So he got robbed and PPP. Oh. Yeah. Both. Life is not good for him right now. Yeah, both. Goodness gracious. Yep. Baby yep. Blue offers advice about PPP loans following his loan fraud case. He's pled guilty. Yep, you're right. Exactly. Wow. So now I he didn't got know robbed. that. He got robbed too. This is what I said. You got to do your Googles. For yeah, you. I didn't know he uh, he got for a PPP fraud. I just seen the headlines where he got robbed and he was fighting for his life in ICU. Wow. Mm. Wow. Amazing. Mm. Just like there was a there was an NFL player and um uh the love and hip hop guy, he uh he bought eight trucks. He bought eight trucks, a whole bunch yeah, of Gucci. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're coming after those guys uh for them PPP loans. Lord Jamar, did you hear about uh Rihanna, both Rihanna and uh, Kim K's new uh fashion wardrobe attire that they're um promoting? <laughs> nope. Rihanna and Kim K are now pushing for butt cleavage with buttless slash crotchless leggings for women. Speak on it, Lord Jamar. <laughs> you know them le leggings that the females wear? The tight leggings? That's what you use that. Speak on it, Lord Jamar. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> wait, wait. Buttless slash no, crotch. Dude, dude, like, dude, do, do me a favor. Lord Jamar, do me a favor. Even put these things no, up if they have on. no butts or hold crotches. On. They're just legs. I don't get it. No, go oh, do this. <clears throat> go to Google right now and type oh, in goodness. type in Rihanna's crotchless leggings and click on images. Oh shit. Please. They're now promoting butt cleavage. You'll see exactly what I'm speaking of. Actual stress, it says. Rihanna mm. buttless leggings. Wait, hang on. Go to images. Mm -hmm. I don't see. Well, I mean, I see a bunch of pictures of Rihanna with. No, nah, that can't be it. <clears throat> hang on. Creach, just leggings, it is? Yeah. You can put buttless leggings and type in Rihanna's <laughs> name. <laughs> Can't believe you didn't hear about this, Lord Jamar. <laughs> it's Rihanna's new line. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, I see. I, I think I see one. Savage Fenty soft. Okay, there's one where the fucking... Yeah, the, there's like a V in the ass. Right. And they have like... Um, <laughs> they have like shoestrings going back and forth. Yes, yes. In the ass area, okay. I see, and it's it's going. It's a D. It almost looks. Hang on. <laughs> They're trying looks, to make this the new wave. Yeah, that almost looks stank. Like it's going to the asshole. Like it's just. You better you better be cleanly with this fucking style, ladies. I'll tell you that. 
Hang on, I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna let y'all see this shit. Shit crazy. There were some women commenting saying, no way they would, you could see, uh, some women were saying they can't wear and work that out in the gym because you'd be able to see what we ate. <laughs> and they can't do squats in those. Y'all see this shit? <laughs> Hang on. Whoa. Y'all see this shit? Woo. Woo. Wow. Woo. I could almost smell it now. Okay. I mean, are y'all rocking this, ladies? Is this something that. Is this something that y'all really. Because I just. Now, there's some girls with those crazy fat asses and, you know, niggas going to be like, damn, you know, <laughs> like, but I, come on, man. What are we saying? Like, like, this girl's going to be, they going to be fucking in the club with this shit on. Like, like, that shit look crazy, yo. Uh-uh. What am I old fashioned? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't fucking know, man. This shit is crazy, yo. That shit crazy. That's the new way of creating butt cleavage now, Lord Jamar. Butt cleavage. Yeah, butt cleavage. Uh well. Do you remember when we was in New York rocking out and we were we were tripping, we were tripping off of the phrase athletic leisurely or something and they were saying how some women would wear it all day long and i don't know if you remember that it was on the news and they called it leisurely athletic leisurely they would wear it to go shopping at the grocery athleisure. store athleisure athleisure yeah athleisure yeah this is this is the new athleisure i don't know what the that's 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 not athleisure that's fucking ass leisure that's <laughs> <laughs> That's an ass lever. Leave that shit alone. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Like, that's just savage shit. You just trying to make savage shit regular. Like, like. And then, and then a girl will wear that, right? And have the nerve to say, damn, why are you staring at my ass? Mm. Mm. You got your ass cleavage out. You got all kinds of fucking. You might as well have a spotlight on your ass. Like you might as well have neon signs and shit. That's probably the next thing. I might have just gave him an idea. Ooh, what if we did put neon signs on the ass? Somebody's thinking. That might be the shit. Maybe hair, maybe naked and just only with neon signs. Ooh. Well, you said it. Things never get better. It only gets worse. Well, hold up. So speaking now, I'm going to segue into some shit because I don't know where you're getting ready to go, but I'm going to segue. But since we're talking about fashion right now, mm -hmm. and I saw somebody ask about this in the comments earlier. I got to I got to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Did y'all see where the Tupac estate released some pride month a pride month collection of clothing in the name of Tupac? Mm. Get on your Googles right now. Mm. You didn't see uh, that? I didn't see that. You said a Tupac, uh... Tupac estate mm -hmm. has released not just a T-shirt, a collection, a collection of merch that celebrates Pride Month. <laughs> what you think, Artie Stacks? <laughs> Hey, you know, on episode one, I had a <coughs> on on episode one. Episode one, huh? Yeah, yeah, I had on a pox shirt. 
Um, oh, you're trying to start it, on niggas right now too subliminally. Remember in episode one, you're trying to let niggas know you've been here since episode one. Episode <laughs> one. Let's do this. Episode one. I had one of these. Eyes, well, this, I had that. one of these on on the first app. Hold Back on. when you was. Remember on episode you, one. Oh, when your I, shit I was, was rocking right, this. was rainbow like that. He was rocking a yeah. rainbow one like that. But it had nothing to do with pride. This was uh from Pac Sun. Remember, you know the store Pac Sun. Okay, well, is that part of their collection now? Is that no, it's, part of the collection? No, it says, um, let me see. Did you, see, you see the collection? Pull up the collection. Look, look, you see where it says Pac Sun? Yeah. That's okay. where I got it. That's the Pac Sun. So I don't know if they got that idea from that. Bro. But I'm go, looking, I'm, I'm typing. Collection. Yeah, I'm, I'm clicking on uh, images. Let me see. Yeah. 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 To the collection. Maybe I'm typing in the wrong thing. I, I typed in two pocket state pride t shirts. Is that what I should type in? And just put in two pocket collection, see what comes up. Two pocket collection, okay. Slow typing, motherfuckers. Don't mind us. I don't see it. Let me click all. I'm on images. No, Lord Jamar, I don't. I don't see it. Maybe I'm typing in the uh, typing in the wrong there thing. There it is. Put in Tupac Pride Collection. Okay. And then you'll see it. Oh my goodness! This should say changes. Here, let me uh, share my screen once again with the peoples, with the good peoples. Oh, okay, it says Tupac Estate drops Pride Month collection, hot yeah. new hip hop. Yeah, there you go. Here we go. Tupac fans angry after his team releases gay Tupac collection. Tupac, Tupac Estate stands with LGBTQ community and releases new Pride collection. So he goes to, you know, yeah. So, but let the record reflect from episode one, my Pac shirt had nothing to do with this. <laughs> okay. Nobody, I don't think anybody's going back except you right now, worrying about what the fuck you had on in episode one. Okay. So let's leave that alone. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, this is why I, I didn't why, know this. What's this all about? Like, you know, they got a, a rainbow Tupac face on the back of this. Um, it says changes. And that's, I guess, the. And see, that's the that's so deep because the overriding message it says changes. Mm. Like, look how they're trying to change society with a certain mentality and a certain, you know, and how people think they're changing from one thing to another. Like, yo, shit is kind of crazy, and they're using someone that we revere, <laughs> you know, in hip hop to promote this now you know the question has to be asked if tupac was alive would he have approved of this no would, it, would he have wanted this no and i'm basing that off of his lyrics i'm basing that off of his lyrics right especially when he went off on dr dre he said, California love part two without Dre. So I don't think he would have approved of that. So it's got to be, I'm thinking maybe it's got to be a money issue. Maybe Tupac's estate needs some money, Lord Jamar. They're trying to generate revenue. I mean, yeah, but, you know. Okay. <laughs> That's the only thing I could chalk it up to is this a money thing and the Tupac estate might need some bread. They, they're chasing that bag, that rainbow bag. Yeah. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> no, thanks. You know what I mean? No, thanks. I'm good. 
Uh, so yeah, I was just curious. I don't know what y'all think about it in the chat, people. Um, you know, like, first of all, who's doing this? Because his mother's deceased. Mm -hmm. Um, who's in control of his estate? That's that's something to um ponder. Hmm. I know it was an attorney out in LA um, that I had correspondence with over the years that was running his estate. I'm not sure if she's still doing it. They said they are trying to calcify his warrior spirit in the youth. Mm. Mm. That's a that's a deep quote. Terezita Van Baum. <laughs> that's an ill name. Terezita Van Baum. That's deep. Calcify. That's deep. Right. Yeah, if they calcify your pineal gland, mm -hmm. when something is calcified, it is hardened. Right. You know, and it's hard. Oh, there goes Dr. Ma. Peace, Dr. Ma. I'm just seeing you. I haven't been watching this chat much. Peace. Um, thank you again for uh, bringing me out on Sunday. It was dope. We need to talk later though, because uh, you know I could have went in. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, Holly Weird, man, we're gonna stay. We're gonna stick on this Hollywood tip. Mm -hmm. Trending over the uh, the past uh, forty eight hours, um, tying in with Diddy, how Diddy wants J Lo back. Well, you see what happened with J Lo. She uh, is not fucking with the homie no more, right? With um. Uh... Rodriguez or A Rod, right? But, but then I heard she was quickly fucking with the nigga Ben Affleck. Yeah, pictures surfaced up of them kissing like they were in two thousand and one. But now, Diddy wants back in. Before that picture surfaced, I read that Diddy wanted J Lo back. Mm. It, it, it couldn't have been more than a week before I seen those uh, pictures surface with uh, Ben Affleck. And it's almost the pictures are almost identical because people were comparing the 2001 picture of them kissing at uh, at an outdoor patio at a restaurant to the uh, 2021 picture. It's almost identical, kind of like it's almost staged, kind of sort yeah. of with the same cup in the same place. The pictures just look identical. Yeah, I mean they probably did that on purpose. You're right. Um, so what are you saying this for? What do you, what do I think about it? I mean, I don't know. It almost seems like going backwards in time. Like, wasn't it Diddy and then Ben Affleck, right? Right. So now right. it's Ben Affleck and now Diddy or, or she's not even entertaining Diddy. Diddy's just putting his, running up the flagpole and seeing if it flies. Is that it? Cause right. I know he put up, I know he put up a, since she's not like on a throwback a Thursday or some shit, he put up a picture of him and J Lo. That's what mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, are you sure? Everybody's I'm shooting saying, their shot. I'm They're saying, shooting are you their sure shot. That he actually said, "Yo, I want her back." Out loud, sure. or are you going by what I saw, which was a throwback Thursday, and he put up a picture acting like? He missed her or some shit. Yeah, that's that's shooting your shot, Lord Jamar. Shooting your shot when you know she's not with A-Rod anymore. Why would you do that? Yeah, I mean. And I guess my main question. Good, because it's a nice um, attention getter. Because he knew that people in the media would immediately say something about it. And sometimes niggas, you know, niggas like that might just wake up one day and just feel like getting you know what i feel like being in the news today mm -hmm. i should do a, i should do a throwback thursday with fucking me and j-lo mm -hmm. you know what i mean like it might it might just be some shit like that like a motherfucker might not even be all that well, serious someone... about it but he yeah. knows that is a, but it is a good time now and yep. then it is a run it up the flagpole and see if it fly. Maybe he's bullshitting, but if she was to respond and be like, oh, word, Puff, you want to do it again? And then he'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, but it could have started as a joke. I don't know. 
Yeah, I'm looking at some of these uh, headlines. It says P. Diddy throws shade at Benifer with throwback J Lo couple pick. Diddy shares Jennifer Lopez photo amid her reunion with Ben Affleck. Oh. So he threw that out there afterwards. Diddy trolls Jennifer Lopez Ben Affleck reunion. Okay. See, he went in on some of the attention of it. You know, let him cut it. He's cutting in like how Ben, I, I, maybe that nigga Ben cut in on him or some shit. Right. Because remember, she broke out on him at a very precarious time. He protected her at that shootout and all of that. Try to run in red lights and all that shit to get her the fuck out of there and all this every shit. And after that, she was like, I can't fuck with you, Puff. And putting out putting out all those singles. Me screets, puff. Putting out all those singles. I need a girl, part seven, eight, nine, and ten. Remember that? I remember being in, I think we was in Reno mm-hmm. back in the days. It was one of those conventions. It's the first time I ever seen uh Cameron perform. <laughs> Him and Jim Jones came out. They had on boxers and and like robes and shit with <laughs> house shoes and and um, socks and shit on. It was shit it was hilarious. Um, but I remember Diddy was there with Jennifer Lopez, mm. like, and they was walking through the fucking through the hotel, like through the hotel lobby or some shit. And the nigga, yo, the nigga, J- um, Puffy was like walking ahead of her, and J Lo was like walking behind like following this nigga type of shit like shit was kind of crazy like i was like wow look at this <laughs> that's kind of fly look that's kind of fly nigga. i was like look at this thing. yo i've seen a, a couple of people do that yo <clears throat> that's that alpha energy fly male i don't know that's kind of fly it depends yo i don't you know maybe he was in the middle of doing some shit too i don't know but it just looked real it crazy. Just, it looked, yeah, looked kind of ill. Looked kind of mm-hmm. ill. You know, the internet is um, kind of still uncharted territory, Lord Jamar. I know you've had your share, your fair share of trolls and stands getting at you on the internet. The internet is almost like the wild. Oh, wild man, it's still here. Some of them are probably in the room right now. Kill them. No, go ahead. <laughs> so. <laughs> The internet, the internet is kind of a wild place. Okay, it's um, uncharted territory, a place where you can have keyboard warriors, Twitter fingers, um, internet gangsters, you know, talking shit. So uh, John Legend's wife, Chrissy Teigen, is now breaking her silence and issued an in-depth apology for her days of internet trolling and bullying, insisting she is now a changed woman. This all spurred from Project Runway star Michael Costello says Chrissy for years, years long campaign to get him blacklisted from the industry for a racist post that he put back in 2014, which he denied and said it was um, photoshopped. Chrissy Teigen was trolling him and calling him on all kinds of names, telling people not to work with him. And uh, he's crying now and saying that he's had deep depression and uh, was going to commit suicide. Speak on that, Lord J. What's your opinion on, on the Internet and Internet trolls and how it affects people saying that they're being bullied as opposed to being bullied in real life? Cyberbullying, basically. <sighs> it's a different era different era of bullying it's a different era see back in the days there was the era of you might have had a bully that nigga you couldn't get into your building (laughs) without seeing this motherfucker you understand this nigga might have lived in your building you have to go in and out of where you live, <laughs> hoping to not see 
this motherfucker and the, and the odds was very high of you seeing your bully so you're gonna have to confront your bully at some point um on the internet you know mm -hmm. you don't have to be here <laughs> you don't yep. have to be here you don't have to log into your fucking twitter or your Instagram or your fucking TikTok or whatever the fuck you fuck with. Um, you choose to do that. Mm. So that's number one. Like, like when you live at the crib, pretty much, you know, and especially if you're a child, um, you pretty much have to live there. You don't have a lot of people don't have the choice of saying, mommy, I'm being bullied. Let's move. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, Except some white kids did have that option. You know, I had to move. I was getting bullied so much that my mother moved us. We moved away. We went to a whole other school, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, some shit like that. Whereas the black kids just got to go through that shit. Like, you know what I mean? Either get bullied or, or overcome the bully. You know what I mean? Some fucking mm -hmm. out. So anyway. But what's crazy, this Michael Costello guy... Mm -hmm. The star of Project Runway, he's a grown man. He's saying, <laughs> the way you just said that, <laughs> I said, what's crazy? He's a grown man. <laughs> We're not talking about a kid here, Lord Jamar. <laughs> We're not talking about nobody's child. We're talking but about Michael Costello. You know, sounds like a child. I'm depressed. I'm going to commit suicide because Christy Teigen. Like, you know who else Christy Teigen was fucking uh, trolling and fucking harassing on the internet? Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you that nigga ain't lose nay sleep about what the fuck she said about him. Right. I'm sure she said way worse shit about this nigga. Um, hey, you shouldn't work with him. You should fucking, you know what I mean? Impeach him, all kind of shit. Try to get him fired. Same shit. Mm -hmm. I bet you that nigga Donald Trump never is will never be like, I'm going to be honest. I had to go to therapy because Christy Teigen, the things she was saying to me were hurting me. In here. You know, like that's not gonna happen. I think he's an ABC guy too. I Peace, think. David Bell. Thank you. Did how brand new being get on the Menace Society uh, Menace soundtrack? What's the story behind the song? Ah, mm. uh, gee, good question, David Bell. How did we get on the Menace to Society soundtrack? I believe it was through. The relationship was it through my brother's UGK? I think mm. it was through Pimp C. Yeah, I think it was through Pimp C and Bon B somehow. Because mm. they were on Jive Records. Um, Medicine Society soundtrack was on Jive. Mm. But wait a minute, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so because I I feel like I first got introduced to Was it because Lior? Was this time Lior? I ever heard UGK was Pocket Full of Stones. Now, did I hear Pocket Full of Stones before the soundtrack came out? Maybe. And then. Nah, nah. I don't think UGK got us on there. They didn't get us on there. I don't know how we got on there. <laughs> wasn't wasn't Lior? Wasn't Lior your, your manager? Got me, UGK got me on Don't Be a Menace soundtrack that's who they got me on that soundtrack um master society yeah it could have been through lior it could have been through lior now that i think about it lior could have made that happen back then um and so the story behind the song was yeah i knew what kind of uh we were able to see little pieces of the movie before we did it you know what i mean they show people clips of the movie so I knew it was some West Coast type of shit and blah, blah, blah. And 
I don't know. I just had an idea of how I wanted it to sound or whatever. You know what I mean? Like how I wanted the drums to go. You know what I mean? That Cali type of, you know, that type of feel. Um, but then I just found this sample or that we, we had found this sample and I mean, I just did what I did to it and boom, 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 boom. <laughs> okay with that shit and uh yeah the rest is history me and x just wrote to the shit uh, based on you know the energy of what we seen from the uh from what they showed us in the movie and then we just took it from there you know what i mean and so that's how that song came about thank you for that question david bell and that's an era where uh soundtracks were a very big deal you get a if you get a joint on the soundtrack yeah Definitely. I mean, I got that uh, mm -hmm. I got that on the wall. The Men's Society is on the wall. Mm -hmm. Well, my brother, Lord Jamar, I think that wraps it up, man. That's the questions uh, that I had on what you think, Lord, on this uh, Hollywood uh, edition, <laughs> music industry edition. You know, you know, you know. Normally, I like to hit you with the with the with the hard stuff and kind of kind of light. On the entertainment end tonight. Well, you know, we're yeah. trying to keep the channel up. <laughs> <laughs> we can't go hardcore, fucking raw dog every fucking time where, you know what I mean? We're straddling the line of fucking, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With this Nazi shit that we're dealing with right now, you know? Right, 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 um, right. Sometimes we got to hit them with the lighthearted topics as well. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And find ways to still say what we need to say. Um, just be, you know, just be smart about it. Yes, sir, my brother. But yes, Artie Stackington. I yes, appreciate Lord. you, my brother. Absolutely, my brother. Love you. Love you too, my brother. Um, if you'd like to uh become a patron, because this this uh this episode will be up on Patreon after this. Um it will not be up on YouTube until a little bit later. You know, we'll be chopping it up and do what we do and all that type of shit. But if you want to see the episode of its entirety, I encourage you to become a patron a patron over at patreon.com. Uh, that's also a place where we're able to, you know, put up certain content and talk about certain things that, you know, the boys over here be acting a little funny with sometimes, you heard? So mm -hmm. um, that being said, I encourage you uh, to become a patron for as little as $5 a month. Um, so yeah, that's what it is. Yes, oh, sir. Peace, peace Dr. Mod. I appreciate you. That's right. Rest in peace. My brother, Pimp C. Shout out to my brother, Bun B. That's right. Menace of Society soundtrack is underrated. Matter of fact, I, I was talking to another star from that uh, soundtrack, and I'm going to get him on the Godcast. Shout out to my brother, MC8. Mm. So get ready for that one. That's crazy. I was just listening to uh, uh, his music uh, a few days ago. Man, Compton Most Wanted used to be my shit on the mm. show. I used mm. to fuck with them boys. That boy, psh, man, used to be singing this shit. Mm. But uh, all right, man, we're going to get out of here. I appreciate everybody for coming through. Um, Dr. Ma'at, I don't know how long you've been here for, but hang on just to make sure, because I did it earlier, but I'll do it again for you. Uh, make sure you go and get the Sisters DVDs, the Mel Trek DVDs, it's volume one and volume two. Um, 
teaching education from our perspective to the seeds animated dvd um yeah check it out shit is dope exploring the pre-columbian america in this one here and in the first one they're exploring ancient africa so this is definitely oh. something to get for your seeds for your grand seeds um you know whatever kind of seed you got all right dr my eye you heard is do my word be born regardless to whom or what mm. yes my word is born and born is life and i shall give my life before my word shall fail mm, on that note we about to make moves appreciate y'all for coming through once again, for what you think, Lord, I'm Lord Jamal. And I'm Artie Stachymus. <laughs> Stachymus, Killimus. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. I'm let you go. I'm not You're going to let me live, Lord uh, J? Yeah, yeah. I'll get on you off camera. Okay. I'll get on you off camera. But I, oh. <laughs> Ah, get on you off that one. Yo, we appreciate y'all coming through. Peace, y'all. Peace.